Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at the top 10 game engines. Now there are some very specific criteria here. This is the top 10 game engines on GitHub. That means they are open sourced, and this is based on community popularity. If you did not know, game, uh, GitHub basically has a rating system of stars, uh, kind of like saying I like or I follow this repository. And as you can see, this is the global ratings for all projects on GitHub. So you see here, there are a number of different uh, popular programs you've probably heard of, like Bootstrap is in here, the Python language itself, the Flutter language, Linux itself, and so on. So this is the top level, all projects. What we're going to focus specifically on is game engines themselves, uh, game engines and frameworks, but I'm not going to include uh, like fan remakes or engine rewrites, uh, just because they kind of muddy the water on what a game engine is and isn't. And to start things off, we have Play Canvas. Now, I do have to warn you right off the hop, this is just for fun. There's no real value in this. This is just an open source popularity contest, basically, but hopefully you find it interesting at the very least. So Play Canvas itself. Uh, this one is uh, the engine behind it. I've liked Play Canvas for a very long time. Uh, you can head over and learn more about Play Canvas on their website. And what you'll find is Play Canvas actually has a full Unity-like editing experience. Uh, this is actually a paid product. What you're getting on GitHub is the game engine that powers this. And so you're not getting the game editor itself. But if you want to make your own JavaScript or HTML5 based game engine, you can build it on top of the Play Canvas code. Uh, so there is a commercial editor available out there. There are free plans if you want to go ahead and check it out. It is probably among the most powerful web-based game engines out there. Uh, so definitely one worth checking out. But the underlying game engine is open sourced and it comes in at number 10. At number 9, this one I kind of went back and forth on. Do I include it or not include it? Uh, this is an open source voxel game engine. So it's not too to run uh, Minecraft games is to create similar games. That's why I went ahead and included it. Even though the name obviously has a very Minecraft throwback, this isn't a modding of a commercial game. So that's why it didn't make the, lit the cuts like some others did. We'll look at those at the very end, honorable mentions, by the way. So if you're looking to create a voxel-based Minecraft type game, uh, this is an open source voxel game engine. Uh, you can mod it, make your own games, play it on multiplayer servers it's available for uh, Windows, Mac OS, GNU Linux, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, Dragonfly BSD, and on Android. Uh, so available on a number of different platforms. If you are looking to basically create your own Minecraft, Mindtest is kind of a starting point for that. Next up, we have Monogame. Now, Monogame started life as XNA. Uh, Microsoft created the, the indie gaming market and then flushed it all down the toilet because Microsoft. Uh, and then Monogame kind of picked it up and ran with it. Since then, this has been used to, to port and then to create a ton of commercial games. You can see a list of some of them right here. Streets of Rage 4, Carrion, Celeste, Starview Valley, and many, many more. And they're not lying with that many more. There are a ton of commercial games that were created using Monogame. And Microsoft just did such a wonderful job creating XNA. It's just such a shame they went and pissed it all away. But it was nice that Monogame kind of went ahead, picked up the pieces, provided a cross-platform implementation of um, their XNA implementation, and they've kind of gone their own way a little bit since. Uh, but Monogame is definitely an interesting project in that regard. By the way, if you want to be a, just a purist, there's also FNA, which is basically an exact port of um, XNA across platforms, both very viable projects, both have a number of ship titles behind them. Model game, I've checked it out a number of times on the channel in the past, very cool project, very actively updated too. So uh, this is ongoing. Uh, if you were looking to create uh, indie platformer or shmups or most 2D style games, Model game is a very good starting point, especially if you like C Sharp. Next up, we have Pixel. Now, Pixel is unique on this list. It's the only one that does not have their own web page. Uh, so I'm just going to show you the GitHub side of things. This is uh, a retro game engine for Python. Uh, I've never actually used it, but to me, it looks very, yeah, Pico 8, uh, which is kind of like these mini consoles that intentionally try to make uh, your environment easier and more constrained, kind of like going back in time and programming for old 8-bit computers. This runs on Windows, Mac, Linux, and web. Uh, you program using the Python programming language. And I think it's, what are we up to, seven or six now? So that's uh, the Pixel Engine. Again, they do not have their own web page, but as you can see, MIT license, 10,000 plus stars, almost 11,000 stars on GitHub, and last updated two days ago. So definitely very uh, frequent updates for Pixel. Uh, next up, we have Raylib. Now, I've talked about Raylib a ton on this channel. I've been a big fan of it all of my life. And I'm also kind of a big fan of the two libraries it was inspired by, uh, the Borland BGI or Borland Graphic Interface from way back in the day of like Borland C4 
4, I think it was. Uh, and then, of course, the XNA framework. The entire idea behind this, there's no dependencies. It's easy to get up and going. Uh, very simple to work with and very robust with what it can do. So here you can see this is a sample, uh, like, hello-ish world um, Raylib implementation, and that's all there is to it. If you're looking to learn the C language or C++ language or any of the languages with uh, bindings from Raylib, which is like 60 plus languages, Raylib is a great place to check out. And it's cool to see them getting more and more popular over on GitHub. I'd like to think I had some help in promoting the popularity of Raylib because I've been a cheerleader for this one all along. There are 60 plus bindings out there for a ton of programming language. It supports a number of different platforms. Uh, you'll come in here, you actually can find, you can learn it all from this single cheat sheet. So this is all you really need to know to get up and going. And each one can be used independently. So if you just care about the functionality added by the core, you could use just the core stuff. You just need input. You can use just the input. It is all kind of uh, modular and independent, and it's super easy to get up and going. It's something you don't often say in the world of C or C++. So if you're looking for a code-focused framework and you want to use C or C++ or one of those uh, 60 language bindings, uh, Raylib is a very good choice. Uh, next up, we have A-Frame. I covered this, I think, once on the channel and nobody watched the video, so I haven't really covered it too much since. Uh, it is a web framework for building virtual reality environments. You actually can create them using what looks like HTML markup. Uh, so you can see an A-Frame uh, code. So here you're creating a scene using a dash scene and you're putting a box, a sphere, a cylinder, a plane and sky and so on. So this is basically vermal or virtual reality markup language 2.0. Uh, and you also have an ECS system built on top of it, and it's built on top of the excellent 3JS framework, which I'm really surprised didn't show up in this list, and I'm not sure why it didn't. But uh, A-Frame, excellent, excellent uh, tool if you are looking to create uh, virtual worlds inside of HTML, basically, uh, especially if you're onto the VR side of things. So you can learn more about A-Frame here. There are a ton of examples here that you can try out, and these ones you can see have VR motion controls. Uh, it's it's a very interesting uh, entry onto this list, a little bit less gamey than some of the other entries. Speaking of which, we have Cocos 2DX, which is one of the oldest entries on this list, especially if we go back to the very beginning. Cocos started life as, was it Python or was it Lua? Way back in the day as Cocos 2D, uh, or sorry, it's Cocos, then Cocos 2D, and then Cocos 2DX was the C++ port of Cocos 2D. So this is a long running, uh, it's actually ported from Cocos 2D iPhone, which was an Objective-C version, which came from Cocos 2D, which I think was a Python version. It's a very long running framework history. Uh, I have done some tutorials on getting up and running it. Uh, if you want, uh, again, fully open source C++ project. Now you'll find if you go to Cocos though, they're mostly focusing these days on their creator. Now Cocos Creator and Cocos 2DX have very little in common. Uh, Cocos Creator is built on top of an open source port of Cocos Engine, uh, but that's about the only kind of commonality that they have at this point in time, other than I think they've got some overlap on the development teams. But if you're looking for a C++ framework for creating 2D games, uh, Cocos 2DX has definitely got pedigree. It's been around for a very long time. Next, we've got Babylon JS. Now, Microsoft are really heavily involved in this one, uh, but I don't know that they're leading it. I'm, I'm never really figured out that relationship fully. Uh, it is a open source 3D framework for developing games. Basically, uh, if you're not going to use Play Canvas for 3D game development, you're going to probably use Babylon JS. I like both of those projects, by the way. This one is full blown open source. They're also getting a little bit more into the editing side of things, which is kind of cool. Uh, so you're getting more and more visual tools before it was very code uh, focused in the way things work. Uh, there is a ton of improvement on this engine. Again, if you're looking to work in uh, web 3D space, uh, Babylon.js is just an excellent starting point. And there's also a heck of a lot of documentation, examples to get you up and going. So you can see some of the examples of what have been built with it. Uh, it is a very powerful framework for uh, web, web GPU now is also supported, uh, but 3D browser based game development. So if you're going to do 3D in the browser, it's going to be Babylon JS or Play Canvas 99% of the time. Unless, of course, you're doing it as a build target, uh, which is kind of a little bit of a different thing with how that works. And at number two, this one actually kind of shocked me that they got this big this fast. I covered them 
quite a few times on this channel, and it's Bevy. Now, Bevy is a Rust-based game engine. Uh, it learned from the mistakes of the early Rust engines that were just too damn complicated, and, and it made it much more streamlined. Uh, this seems to be the um, Rust game engine project with the most momentum. There is another one out there. Uh, it used to be called Rage 3D. It's now called Firox. If you're looking to do Rust game development, you're probably going to either use Firox or Bevy. They both have slightly different approaches to how they are doing things, but they are both much simpler than what the first generation of Rust game engines look like. Uh, but it is a data-driven, uh, ECS-based 3D game engine with a very robust number of features at this point in time and growing almost daily. They do releases every two or three months, and uh, it's a very solid thing. You see here, uh, very much a lot of people working on, a lot of momentum behind Bevy. Again, it's probably the uh, Rust game engine that has the most momentum right now. And if I was going to do a Rust project, I would probably start with Bevy. But I'm not a Rust developer, uh, so I can't really tell you the, the strengths or merits or the quality of the code or anything like that. But in working with it, I have been impressed with Bevy every time I've used it. And then that finally brings us to the number one spot. And I don't think there's going to be any surprises that this one uh, it's the Godot game engine. Uh, so this is the biggest open source game engine right now. A lot of momentum. Uh, this project has 55,000 stars. So let's let's do a comparison. So let's go back to uh, Bevy here. Second place is 20,000. So yeah, the Godot game engine is ahead by a mile. I have covered Godot a ton on this channel in the past. I will be covering Godot a ton in the future. I'm not gonna go through too much about Godot itself, but it is the closest thing we have to an open source Unity or Unreal Engine competitor. Although there is one honor honorable mention that just missed the list. And I have a feeling uh, if I do this video again next year, it will make the top 10 and we'll get to that in the honorable mentions category. So these all came from basically the game engines category from GitHub as rated by start. Now, one thing you wanna know about this list though is I pruned some things off of it. So for example, this one is just a list of, of stuff. I don't know why it made it into this genre or this game dev tag here. Um, so that one, or I'd mentioned game engine tag here. Uh, that one, I just precluded it. Uh, there are also a number of things. This one, Matter.js, is a physics engine for 2D web-based games. A very cool project. I think I've covered it once or twice in the past, but just know it doesn't really fit the category of game engine. It's more of a library for a specific thing. OpenRA uh, is for making Westwood games like Red Alert Run. Uh, and Open Age is for Age of Empires. So I didn't cover those kind of games, uh, nor did I cover Open Diablo 2, which I thought about covering, to be honest, because uh, they have just forked it off. So what they've done is they spit off the engine into its own project called the Abyss Engine. Uh, which I'm going to have to check out at some point in the future. So this is an open source action RPG game engine. Uh, I don't know how it's going to go because, again, there haven't been too many updates immediately. But this is from that project. So it, it came close to being its own game engine. But the spinoff project isn't isn't actually in this rating list, so it didn't get included. But do be aware that that is out there. Uh, Board Game IO is for management multiplayer networking, so it didn't make the list. Uh, and then we get into some of the more interesting things. The Amethyst engine, this is, remember I said that there were some Rust game engines that were like way overly complicated? Yeah, this is one of them. Uh, so I, I would say that um, Firox and uh, Bevy both learned from the mistakes or the, the design of Amethyst. And I think a lot of the developers actually crossed over, uh, but this one doesn't seem to have a lot of momentum behind them. ENTT, I actually covered this on the channel in the past. It is an entity component system framework uh, for building entity component systems on top of your game engine, but not technically an engine itself. Uh, and then we got a Bitten, uh, a 2D game engine for the Go programming language, which is strangely popular at 7.4K. The Flame engine for Flutter, I covered that one in the past as well. Um, and then I think this is the one that we're gonna see the most growth in next year. So the O3D engine is up to 5.6K. Again, I think by next year, it will be in the top 10 just because there's so many people behind it. Uh, this one used to be called uh, Lumberyard. Before that, it used to be called CryEngine. Uh, now it's O3DE. Uh, it's a huge open source project. It, it's basically the closest thing that we have to an open source Unreal Engine in scope and size and so on. But they've done a lot of rewrites. They're, they're very early on in some ways with what they support. In other ways, they're really far along. It's a very strange uh, dichotomy or mix in that regard. But I think O3DE definitely has a future here. And then GDevelop. I'm actually shocked that this one didn't come higher in the list as well. Um, this is a open source cross-platform game engine that's very user-friendly, very visual in the programming interface. 
Uh, then we got Melon JS and a few others. And another one in here that seems to have lost some momentum lately is Stride, uh, which is based off the Zenko game engine, uh, which was from Silicon Studios, uh, open sourced a couple of years ago. This is a C Sharp based game engine. Looks a lot like Unity uh, with the way you run it. Very uh, stable engine. Uh, it's just, again, they lost some momentum since going open source. Orho 3D is another one that's in there. So there are a ton of interesting engines in here. Flax is another interesting engine that is definitely up and coming. Uh, so yeah, that's the uh, list as we saw it. Again, a ton of really cool th projects here that I've either covered over time or will cover in the future. But that, ladies and gentlemen, was the top 10 most popular and a handful of honorable mentions or projects that I think that I could see in the near future making this list if I do it again. And speaking of doing it again, let me know if you'd like to see this, like maybe on an annual basis or a biannual basis. Bye. It's biannual basis once every half a year or every two years. I always screw that up. Anyways, let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.